Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? Uh, happy spring. Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan here for Inside the Birds. And Adam, I didn't even realize it. I thought spring was later this month. Yeah. Found out over the weekend. It's spring. It's a very welcome sight. It's warm. It's beautiful. It's going to yeah. be a great week. Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome back to work if you're working this week. Uh, I mean, I know some kids are on spring vacation if they even have it anymore. It's been so long since you and I have been in high school and all that. Uh, who the hell knows? But um, I know some families, some friends with families, they're, uh, they're on vacation, take some time off and all this stuff. So good for them. But we are in the midst of free agency. Uh, Eagles have made a move. Hey, a really interesting move and a good one, I, I think. And we'll get That's into that. Right. And a um, couple, you know, reciting and um, we're getting close to this, you know, the draft, we're getting you know, a little closer to the draft, we're still ways away, but getting a week closer. So we'll, we'll, we'll be mentioning a couple of things that we got coming up with that and um, quarterback news maybe this week, we'll see what happens there. And um, certainly uh, the, the defense is going to take on a, a, a sort of a broader look in the show. Yeah, I look forward to getting into it. You, you remember when we were saying once the Carson Wentz stuff ended, we can really start to attack this year's team and get into scheme and personnel. And of course, as we said on the last two podcasts, we said, look, the Eagles are bargain hunting. I know it looks bad. Now all these names are flying off the board. The Eagles are doing nothing. But as we remind people all the time, a lot of these people who are signing big contracts, you know, the Eagles used to do that and it wouldn't work out. So of course you gotta, you gotta fill your holes and safety wound up being, a bigger hole than maybe we even expected because of not just the loss of Jalen Mills, which you hit that one on the head. I thought he, there was a better chance he'd be back. You knew you seem to, to think he'd be gone. He was gone, but then obviously losing Rudy Ford, who is a special teamer, but had seen time at safety because of all the injuries, right? They were thin. They, were thin. they needed to make a move. Right. But Rudy Ford was only R Rudy Ford is like Chris Maragos. He's only going to play at safety unless there's an emergency. I mean, he, sure. he was the best special teams player in terms of speed. He was, incredibly fast and he was a favorite of um of Dave Fipp the former uh special teams coach so he he's now what a uh Tampa or Jacksonville one of the two teams Fipp I thought he was with Detroit no 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 Rudy Ford uh oh Rudy Ford yeah went to Jacksonville yeah, yeah so yeah. so the Eagles yeah. wound up kind of doing two moves right that they replaced Rudy Ford with the uh um Andrew uh, Andrew uh, Adams yeah Andrew, Andrew Adams. Adams thank you Andrew yeah. Adams yep. and then of course they they replaced Jalen Mills with um Anthony Harris we'll get into that I think it's it's just going right now like consistently with with what we're doing at ITB that it works out so well that uh on the next Q&A which will drop um uh Wednesday morning as it always does we're gonna have Quentin Michael former safety for the Eagles and Jason Avant um both talking about the impact that they expect Anthony Harris to make. They're going to watch some tape on him. They've already seen him anyway. So they're going to have a whole lot of insights on not only I've, I asked them to do this. Um, not only are they going to talk about the signing of Anthony Harris, but they're also going to take a look at that Minnesota defense and see how it's different from what Jim Schwartz is. And we'll get into that oh, it's as well, but different. they're going to, they're going to yeah. break it down yeah. and, and re yeah. let our people awesome. know. Exactly. I, I, oh, I can't wait. And that drops Wednesday morning, by the way. Q&A drops every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern. Uh, they've now done three shows. They, they're covering so much ground, and the last show is like an hour and a half. It, there's so much minutia of the first three shows. They cover the receivers. They cover the defense. Mm -hmm. um, the quarterback situation in their first show, which is fascinating. I mean, you, you, and pretty much everything you could think they could cover, which you would think would take two months, they covered three shows. They have, they including their own – their own personal experiences in free agency, yes, which was the last too. one, yeah. which uh, yeah. people love the story. So no, it'll be great. They'll, they'll, they'll break down Anthony Harris and the Vikings defense and let Eagles fans kind of know what to expect on both fronts. And of course, next week, not this week, but next week, we will have our first show with Greg Cosell inside the draft with Greg Cosell. It'll drop uh, Tuesday morning 6 a.m like everything we do drops at 6 a.m so inside the birds with greg cosell it'll be myself adam greg cosell and we'll we'll get right into it for and that's again that's a six week uh, a weekly show for six weeks five weeks we'll preview the draft and then one show with greg will wrap up the eagles draft and uh, look forward to getting that started next week so let's get into uh some of the more pressing things here adam on um on inside the birds as we do well, well let's talk about the the anthony harris signing that, that's the bigger one 
Um, oh yeah. You know, obviously we, we, we said that we felt this team was really going to do something to bring in someone who was familiar with the scheme, either at safety or corner, or maybe both. We mentioned a name like Xavier Rhodes, who wound up re-signing in Indianapolis, but he has both experience, Xavier, with Minnesota and Indianapolis. Here you have Harris, who not only does he have experience, but he was actually coached by Jonathan Gannon for a couple of years when Jonathan was the assistant defensive backs coach with the Vikings. So everything about this move makes sense and reminds me of when Jim Schwartz took over the Eagles defense and the Eagles signed guys like Nigel Bradham, Leotis McKelvin. They signed some people. Now, it, they didn't all work. Oh. I know that. But they signed Leotis people. Leotis McKelvin. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And then they traded for Darby, who I believe God, had spent a year with, with Schwartz, too. Yeah. So it's important. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that. So Anthony Harris is here to help teach this defense. He's a true deep safety. He is not a box safety. The, the tape, I, I got a tape right down from an NFL personal source who had a, read me a scouting report um, and, uh, for free agency. Um, he's a true post safety. He, he, he's like for Harrison Smith was your move around, put him in the box, make a play on the ball type safety. Right. Harris is deep. Um, Really smart football player will help everybody get lined up correctly. We'll know this defense inside and out. That is why he's here, folks. 100% why he's here. This is one of two players. They're going to bring another at some point. I, I couldn't tell you if it's a week or six months, but they're going to add another player for, who, who's played for Gannon knows the defense. Um, now, I, I'm not saying what position is. I don't know yet. Um, I one of the names shot down, and we'll see about the other name I heard. Um, but they, they're going to add the, – the, They've got the linebacker coach Rollis, mm -hmm. young guy, young, young linebackers coach who's who knows this defense obviously because he worked for Zimmer. Right. And Gannon knows him. He's here because of that. And Harris is here because of this defense. Period. Another story. He's when we'll get into what his tape showed, but he absolutely is here because of that. And now they've got Harris and uh, Adams, the other safety. He's more. Uh, I'm told he's more of a fourth safety than a third. He'll play special teams. Right. Uh, Guys, it's sort of a journeyman safety. But now, as you were talking about, uh, you got also Rodney McLeod come back for an ACL. You've got two 30-year-old safety. Harris, the way teams look at it, it's not your age now. It's what is your age during the season? He turns 30 during the season. So, folks, he's 30. That's yes. the way NFL teams look at it. It doesn't matter what he is. When he'll right be now. 30. It's what he is in the season. Right. First half of the season, he'll be 30. Yep. So, he is a 30-year-old safety. Mm -hmm. McLeod is in his 30s and coming back from a torn ACL. What have you been saying for the last year at safety for this football team? Adam, the Eagles have 10 picks. I think they have four. 11. 11. 11? I think they got four in the top 150, 120, something like that. They got a first rounder, second rounder, two third rounders, right? I'll bet my life they don't take a safety with any of those picks. <laughs> I will bet. I will sign right now that they do not take a safety with any of those picks you we're, I, i'm not on the safety class you know for the draft yet so i don't know doesn't even guys. matter <laughs> i know but i i mean geez they got two this is the perfect year to draft the replacement for mcleod this year would be the perfect because you got to think if if harris does well he signed for one year and five million i don't know the breakdown yet um uh, we'll have it for thursday for sure i just i have a like 100 contract breakdowns in my computer i just didn't get harris yet but i i know it's one year for a total of five million i don't know if it's three million with upside of five i don't know what it is yet so right, um right. but i i just got to think that he's fairly durable by the way he's a smart guy that what he's known for in, in personal circles he's his smarts and knowing where he's supposed to be and ta he's a good tackler but he had a career high in tackles now part of it was because they're they're second they got torched they're they they were down two games, a total of four corners in each game. So they were playing guys who shouldn't have been playing. But uh, he had, that's why he had more he had more plays to make because in terms of tackling. But his role, like his role changed a little bit last year. He had to do different things that he was used to because they were so beat up in the secondary corner. Right. But he he's look, he has a chance to be here for a while, you know, a couple more years if he plays well. 
Oh, sure. And if the Eagles keep not drafting safeties, I would agree yeah. with you. <laughs> um, I, Get you himself know, a nice extension. <laughs> I, and, and yeah, and they have a lot of needs, okay? Uh, offensive uh, line is a need. Uh, backup running backs a need. Wide receiver depth, obviously. Safety, developmental safeties. They probably need two of them. We don't know about uh, Wallace because remember he was drafted for a different scheme and a different staff does it. So basically he's a complete unknown folks. They know nothing about him, the staff. So yeah. we'll, and linebackers, you could take 50 of them. I mean, you know, they just yeah. don't have any line. They've one linebacker Singleton. Right. So I also spoke to, um, a, you know, a personnel source from another team who's familiar with the Vikings has uh, done a lot of breakdown of them. Echoed a lot of what you said. Um, he, he is, a, a decent athlete, not a great athlete, um, more smart than athletic, right? Uh, knows how to put himself in the right spots. Every once in a while, he's smart enough to be able to jump her out. In fact, when you go back to why he had six interceptions two years ago, right, uh, and none last year, is because he's he's smart and he knows where to be. And they obviously had a very good pass rush two years ago. And he was surrounded by some pretty good talent. They were good defense two years ago. They've been decent defense under Mike Zimmer. But he's not like a play. He's not an Earl. The guy specifically said, look, he's not shot out of a cannon like Earl Thomas is. He's not, you know, obviously he is what he is. It's a one-year, $5 million contract. So I hope people from us can, can understand that, yes, he did have the franchise tag two years ago. But I would say that's more like kind of the way you know, LJ Smith got the franchise tag from the Eagles almost a decade ago because they wanted to keep him. They needed to keep him. They knew he wasn't really worth that price, but it's just one year. And the Vikings just needed to be able to keep him for a year. They didn't really have a successor there. I think what's also good about it, Adam, is that this is a guy who uh, has been around, as you were mentioning before, some pretty good safeties. I mean, when he got with the team, uh, was mostly a special teamer, but that's because, as you mentioned, they had Harrison Smith, who was a very versatile safety who can do everything. And, of course, they had Andrew Sandejo, who was the box safety who will come up and, and nail you. And on that defense, man, when you had Sandejo and Eric Kendricks and um, uh, Everson Griffin at the time, was, I mean, they had a good, everybody remembers that defense. It was a good, hard-hitting defense. So this guy – How did the – how did they torch him in 17 in the championship game? I, oh I don't God. know, man. <laughs> Anthony Barr on that they, team. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's still there. We, unfortunately, he was hurt last season. but And, right. and so was uh, right. Daniel Hunter is an absolute superstar. Correct. Uh, it, it is amazing that Super Bowl that they found a flaw in the tape. Is that, I'll give you a little of a nugget. In that, their, their tape study for that game during the week, they found something. Uh, I don't know if it was Tuesday or Wednesday. I talked to an Eagle source during that week. They, I don't know how the hell they did it, but they found something on Harrison Smith and boy, they exploited. I mean, this is one of the best stages in football. I, I, this is, it, this is coaching. Like this is about coaching, man. When you have a great staff, that that's, that's what's so disappointing is how things unraveled for the, you know, for the former staff, Off, whether it's offense or defense, how just things over time were not as good. Just amazing in 17, how everything worked well. Right. No, you're absolutely right. That, that season, ma lightning in a bottle, it starts to look more and more like it uh, <laughs> as the years go by. Uh, what, what other quick thing on, on Harris? And that'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it's the defense in general is different this year than, than under Schwartz. He, you're right. He's not the box safety type, but he's also not a single high, great, deep post safety what i was told well, he's was a that, post safety i was well told. i mean if you had to choose one Absolutely. you would put him up but remember they play a lot of zone and they play a lot of quarters out in minnesota so when yeah. you play quarters you are a deep safety but you're not by yourself right you have other you have the other safety you have some other deep backs around uh dropping into those that zone there so it's not like he'll have to always be in a situation where he's the only guy back there and has to make that kind of decision uh you know, in a cover three look all the time. So th they'll, they'll switch it up. On, well, we'll see. We'll see what Jonathan Gannon does. He's definitely not a box safety. I was definitely not a box safety. Right? Very strongly. He is not, he doesn't. Yeah. Anyone who thinks he's Malcolm Jenkins clearly hasn't talked to anyone. They're just guessing. He doesn't play anything like that. He's just right. a smart post safety, deep safety, who just is just a good football player. He's a great story of development as an undrafted guy. R really. Uh, and that remember we said they were bargain hunting. This is a bargain for this guy. Five million. This mm -hmm. is a this is a good deal for them. Now, here's another interesting thing about him. 
he went undrafted, but he's not your typical undrafted free agent because he was one of the better safety prospects coming out uh, that year, his senior year at Virginia. By the way, didn't Rodney McLeod go to Virginia, now that I think about it? I offhand it without looking. I don't know. I thought Rodney McLeod, or maybe Maryland. I have, I, yeah, I can't remember offhand. I'll look it up. But, uh, well, while I tell my story, you can look it up. You got it. Um, he was actually one of the better safety prospects, but he had played with, he had a torn labrum that year, uh, played with it, had to get it surgically repaired. Oh. So he did not make the senior bowl. I do. I believe he did not make the combine either. And you know how it is with, with prospects uh, and medicals. Um, so he wound up, you know, not getting drafted at all. So he, he, he does have a very good story of being an it's undrafted amazing. agent to make Here's- it, but it's not like he was like, you know, against all odds type. He was a pretty so, good player. So I didn't know that. So yeah, he, um, they both played at Virginia. How huh? good call by you. Um, Rodney's older, but yeah, I don't know if they were there at the same time or not, but here's the thing I don't understand about Harris. If he was that good at torn labor. Okay. It, it'll throw him down the board a little bit, but geez, if he's that good of a football player, he clearly is. Cause he's been a really good professional. Great story as he worked his way up the depth chart over the years, man, somebody missed on him. I obviously great job by Rick Spielman. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the um, Vikings general manager, but man, I, the guys are good. I mean, to be this good as an undrafted free agent, you, as you outlined, he had a, a torn labrum, but that should have got him undrafted, man. They, great job of scouting by Minnesota. Wow. Yeah, definitely. And they've obviously hit on safeties. They've had a, a lot of good ones lately. Um, so we'll see. I mean, he should come in here and, and hold the fort down. You know, I always say, just don't, you know, the contract usually tells you, who you are. You remember how excited people got? And I don't blame them because I mean, there was part of me who was somewhat tantalized by it too. The Will Park signing last year was a one year signing for like what, 2 million or 1.8 million? Like two and a half. He he claimed he had an offer. I believe it was from the Vikings, if if I recall correctly. But here's the problem with Jim Schwartz. This guy's a Will Parks is a, you know, I remember Greg Cosell coming on our show. Um, We were previewing the NFC East. Will Parks is a certain type of safety. For it to work, you got to use them the right way. Now, I know he got hurt. He had a significant hamstring strain. But you had a plan for this guy. Let him let him come back and work toward it. They just gave up on the guy immediately. Immediately. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Do you, think, do you think they were doing that for comp reason? Did they, did they release him before the comp pick date? I think they might have. They released him right? during the season. Well, remember, he came – I'd have to look it up. He was gone for at least the first six weeks, right? Uh, well, I don't know if it was six. He was gone for was, a lot, a while. He was gone he for had, a while. Okay. I'd have to go check, yeah. I don't M- know. Might have been, but man, I, I remember we were talking last year, The thing, the, yet another criticism of Schwartz was valid from um, personnel people around the league is that mm-hmm. he's not real good with specialists other than the Malcolm Jenkins role, which they, he completely changed his role over time and Malcolm had something to do with that. I know Malcolm kind of had a say in it. Not a lot of specialist roles for Jim Schwartz with his defense over the years. He just didn't believe in it. That's right. why you didn't see real situational pass rushers. Right. Uh, the way other teams use them. That's why yeah, Gennard Avery. Look, what's that? Gennard Avery could not oh, find a role. Perfect in example. That one That one was a complete miss. I know he's still here. He's being moved to strong side linebacker. Um, he, he could have been the stand-up role. I know that. Um, what's the kid's name? The undrafted kid at tours ACL. Joe, um, Joe Osman. 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 He was supposed to be a joker. I know he tore his ACL, but never happened. Unfortunately, never worked out. I'm hoping here. We're so so early here. We're in March, so we don't know a lot. I know. Um, we'll go over the offense if we have time here. We'll go over. We just learned some stuff over the last week on their scheme, but I would like to see this. De- th- these coaches get more out of these players than the, the former staff did because they were so set in their ways. And that, that is a valid criticism. It's not just not me saying it, it's people telling me for over the years. And that was a disappointment. Yeah, definitely. So we'll see. It's a, it's a smart, sensible signing. I wouldn't make too much of it. I wouldn't discard it. It's just a one-year signing. And you hope the guy can come in here, um, kind of help, help everybody else acclimate to the defense and play fairly well. And if he gets an extension, that's good. That means he probably exceeded expectations but I really hope it doesn't preclude the team from thinking about drafting a safety high but we'll see uh, as we get closer to the draft Uh, there was another signing it was an in-house signing they did re-sign defensive tackle Hassan Ridgeway a guy that also has experience with the Colts he played with the Colts before coming over in a trade with the uh, Eagles 
So that's good because he, he knows the scheme, knows Gannon. Here's the thing I wonder about him, and I think we have to find out a little more. I, I, my sense was that Hassan Ridgeway has always been like a three technique, a backup three technique yes. type of D tackle. I, I've said this on the podcast before. I've heard that Gannon would like in some form or fashion, maybe not a starter, but um, more of a, um, uh, like a nose, right? Huh? Um, which is not a three technique. That's a guy who lines up instead of a, over the sh- outside shoulder, more head up on the offensive lineman, uh, more of a run stuffing guy. You'll see them a lot in three, four defenses, but they can also be in four threes as well. So I don't know if maybe he envisions Hassan R- Ridgeway being able to play that. I don't know if Hassan played it that way in Indianapolis. He might have uh, just something, just some food for thought there with the connection. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, you said a couple weeks ago they're going to get it. They need a nose. And I know that role is not going to be more than probably 10, 15, 20 plays. But Ridgeway is seen around the league as a fourth tackle down a third. But he's got upside as a fourth tackle. He, he could be, if it all works out over his career with the Eagles, and again, he's only back uh, probably for a year. I haven't seen the contract yet. But whatever he's back here for, he's still a fourth tackle until he proves otherwise. But he, from what I understand, he's put up together some really good tape in training camps, and he's just had some – Bad luck with injury, but he definitely has some talent. You gotta stay healthy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many guys we talk about on this team that have bad luck with injuries. It seems like three at every position, but they are thin at defensive tackle, thinner than they've been in the past. So you've got really good, you're top heavy. You have Fletcher Cox, you have uh, Javon Hargrave. That's great. Still probably one of the, if not the best, one of the best uh, defensive tackle tandems in the league, but you're really missing that number three guy. But also, what we have to find out is, is he going to rotate as much as Jim Schwartz did? Very few people rotate uh, linemen the way Jim Schwartz does. So maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But I still think they need a young developmental future starter at defensive tackle to go alongside, I guess, probably Javon Hargrave as Fletcher kind of enters the the downside of the career. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So we'll see. I agree. Yeah. Um, just trying to think. That's pretty much it. And that we, we went through Andrew Adams, a uh, special teamer mostly. Yeah. Uh, for safety. Yep. For, for safety. safety. How many times do we call somebody though a fourth this or a fifth that? And and then a <laughs> by week eleven, they're starting, right? <laughs> Not because you know they what? deserved it. <laughs> and and I and, and it, we've got some good questions on our. You know, I, I peruse the, uh, the the Facebook boards a couple times a week, and a couple guys asked us like is there anything we've learned about their injury situation? And it's a great question. You know, they, they've, you know, they, they changed, had a athletic trainer. They had their sports science people of, you know, they, they've, they, they hired that chief of uh, that arch guy um, a couple years ago to overlook at their, their injury situation. Right. It's still as bad. And then obviously it was terrible last season. Now, the one thing you have to ask yourself is, and I like that I'd actually have to look this up. How many of them are older players? You know, the Jason Peters types, the Lane Johnson types, guys 30 or year, years or older. I'd like to know is what's the injury rate for the guys 22 to 28? Because that's, you know, if, that, yeah. if, if they got an issue with that, they got a major problem. I just well, don't know because I haven't studied it. But that that's how I take those questions one step further. Because right. you're asking for trouble with, with 30 or riding the cloud to an ACL. Um, uh, Lane Johnson, uh, re- rebuilt his ankle. As he said, he was shattered. Uh, you know, you, you now Fulgham had ankle surgery, but he's in his mid he's 25, but I would like to know what, what the injury factor has been for the guys in their twenties. Curious. Yeah. I'll, I'll wind up looking it up. I mean, a couple of them come to my head, right? I mean, um, it, it depends on what you classify as severe or not, but Miles Sanders did have to struggle, uh, both in the pre for, for two years now, first year. He struggled with the hamstring injury in the in the offseason, right? Both hamstrings, by the way. I'm told both hamstrings, but right and left hamstring, which is not right. good. Nope, not good. And then he had the that and then an ankle later in the year, I believe it was, or a shoulder. Yep, light, real light one, right? It was against the Giants in 19. And then, right. and then, of course, go ahead. This hamstring strain you and I reported on before the season, I'm like, and it's a great point you made. You got to keep an eye on Sanders. Look, we haven't talked a lot about him. He... Certainly was disappointing last season. The Eagles weren't down on him. He just didn't – he didn't regress, folks. That's not what happened. He just didn't progress. He didn't He didn't progress like they thought he would. Um, there are a lot of reasons for it. Play calling was atrocious. That's not a secret. That's a fact. Yeah, being behind He didn't play particularly well. 
I'm sorry. Being behind in a lot of games, especially that, later um, in the plus year. he dropped too many passes. He dropped, depending on who you believe. The thing that I had a problem with last year, and I, I I argued over this with people. I don't care if it's at your ankles. Catch the football. I understand you want to be going forward. Just catch the football. Mm -hmm. I understand. I understand he was throwing the ball low. Wentz was. Right. But it's your job. If you got your hands on it, catch it. Right. And that that's on that's on uh, Miles Sanders. All right, so we have Miles who had some injuries, not not out for the year, but he, you know, fortunately yeah. the the most severe ones were in the preseason or offseason. Uh, Jalen Rager had two injuries. He had a, a, you know, obviously he had the the thumb early on. No, no, it was the shoulder in training camp when he was making a tackle that kept him out. He came back and then a few weeks later he he broke the thumb. Was it not a broken thumb? I forget. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had yeah. a procedure done. Um, Alshon obviously was coming back uh, right. from his list Franck injury. Mm -hmm. um dallas goddard has been uh, goddard, missed yep. you know stretches and including yep. last year so it seems like the young guys are, are getting Jeez, it too. All, now, now, hey we've done our <laughs> research we don't need to run here andre right? dillard andre dillard zach, out for zach the year Ertz. zach Ertz had ankle surgery after the season right um right. brandon brooks coming back from his significant injury isaac simalo had a significant um uh, spray knee i'm told last season Oh, I forgot he, he about that. That's right. Yeah, missed a lot of time. Yes, he did. Um, oh, my God. I totally forgot about Sam Alder missing all that time. You had the scoop Jack on Driscoll. Hargrave. Jack Driscoll's a rookie, and he was playing well, and he got hurt like three he different hurt, times right. during the year. Um, Javon Hargrave, you had the scoop. What was it? Pectoral strain? Something like Pec, that? Uh, Peck. Pec. It, it was a, probably a severe strain because he was out for okay. quite a while from the weight right, room. Right, right, right. And then he came uh, back and had a hamstring injury. <laughs> Right, right. And then Barnett, did Barnett have anything? I know he was a little bit down in weight in training camp. I know he missed some time in training well, camp. Well, they kept, they held him out for almost the first three or four weeks of training camp and okay. kept saying he was day to day without, I think they called it lower body, right? I mean, we never really got yeah. the, uh, the I whole mean, official. Geez, that's, that, that, I don't, I, it, it's, it's, I know people want to nail the, the, the medical staff. I just can't tell you. It's so subjective. There's no way to, it's like people want to point the finger. Mm -hmm. somebody i just don't know <laughs> like jeff and i in 18 at the end of 18 we did a show it was uh post it was was it during the playoffs or was it like that show we did from the um the the uh the bar next to uh 33 station market market tavern right we did that yeah. show on the medical staff yep was that like after they lost, they lost in the playoffs. I don't even remember why we did it. Oh, that was during the holidays of the 2018 season. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, man. So yeah, we not, mu it not much time. has changed other than the medical staff, but still not much has changed. I don't know what. It, I just don't. I, I, oh, Nate Gary. Nate Gary went on IR. He's oh yeah, he got in it. He he had a he had it. I think. Uh, yeah, I think he had something done. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Excuse my <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. I, I just, I'm just, I'm just flabbergasted at the amount of injuries. Yep. Avante Maddox this, has had injuries. Uh, yeah, not this past year, too. but the year before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who hasn't got hurt? I'm telling you, man, to everybody, everybody. So, so, has been hurt. so what, what do we folks? What, I mean, okay. You could say it's the medical staff's fault, but what do you basically like? Do, you don't know that they're not being trained, right? It's been three different don't... medical staffs now. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I don't understand. I just don't understand. Anyway. Uh, I'm with you on that one. Uh, all right. Download the top rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code ITB to get all of your sign up bonuses. Promo code ITB to get all of your sign up bonuses only on the top rated DraftKings Sportsbook app. Real quick, Adam, uh, did you happen to catch, I, I'm sure you did, the Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman press conference? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's All interesting, right. yeah. All right, I, I asked Jason and Quentin to, to make sure they, you know, look at it. I want them, I because I, I feel like out of um, line to try to act like I know what a player thinks of this. I've, I've never played at the NFL level. I have a suspicion that when you see a guy kind of be an over to me it sounds like nick over explains things okay like he he starts talking about something he gets excited about it fine no problem with that uh then he kind of babbles a little bit more on oh my brother he did this and then they were in a spread and then like what what started off as like good substance and good information almost becomes like rah rah i think the, the one thing you can say about this guy adam is that yeah. he is the most 
rah-rah energetic head coach that the Philadelphia Eagles have had in decades. I mean, Andy to Chip to Doug, <laughs> none of these guys were like this. And so this is culture shock for us, for the city, and maybe some of the players who are very more used to a quiet, stoic kind of guy. Yeah, he um, he's super energetic. I think the fans are going to like him. He, he, he did a great interview with Dave Spadaro about two or three weeks ago on, on his entire coaching staff. It's really good. I would recommend folks go to the Eagles website and watch it, or you can watch it in the app. Uh, but it's really good, and I love how he breaks down every coach. A lot of stuff I didn't know, um, and how he kind of found out about him and, and some other stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, he needs media coaching is what he needs because you explain it really, really well. You're a minute and a half in. I'm like, wow, this is really good detail. End it, dude. Move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. You got to know when the clock goes off in your head. Like, this is that, like, you and I are doing a podcast. It's supposed to be detailed. Like, you're supposed to go, and if you're passionate about something, go. It's your, your floor. Go with it. This is a press conference, man. Hit bullet this point, this point, this point, this point. Get out and move on to the next one. And he just doesn't get that. And that comes from media training. Yeah, the, the one thing I want to make perfectly clear is I think he's genuine. I don't think this is Oh, yeah, act. for sure. I, that's fair. Yeah, I, I think when you're genuine, your players will appreciate that for the most part. But to be fair, Chip Kelly was not fake. Chip Kelly was genuine. He didn't give you a distilled version of who he was, but his version of genuinity did not appeal to the locker room. And no. that's where I wonder about no. Sirianni. Like, I believe his players will view him as being genuine, but these are now grown men. I mean, look, he's been a coach in the NFL, so I'm not, but now it's different. You're in charge of the entire locker room. If you win, it'll be fine. But I, I just find he is so different than any Eagles head coach, maybe since, I don't know, Buddy was energetic, <laughs> but even oh, Buddy is yeah. totally he different. Was, oh, <laughs> the fans loved him. You know this. Yeah, but I, I disagree with you yeah. when you say okay. you think Philadelphia is going to love him. I think. Philadelphia, oh, this guy? Oh, no, I was I, talking, oh, oh this, no, I was just talking about Buddy Ryan. The fans No, but Buddy. you also said you thought Philly oh, was going to um, love Nick Sirianni. Okay, they're going to like, know. no, but they're going to like that he's genuine. He's got energy and passion. Uh, now, the, the, the issue that the players had with Doug Peterson year one is they took advantage of him in 2016. Mm -hmm. That, as I understand it, it, Doug was not cracking down on guys who weren't behaving in the right way. Uh, he wasn't finding players, I'm told, year two. Uh, particularly, guys weren't getting away with a lot of stuff, and um, guys were buying in better. If something happened. I, to this day, no one will tell me the truth. Of what I swear someone sat him down, Doug, and said, listen, dude, you need to get your bleep together. Guys are walking all over you. You got to toughen up. I don't know what happened, but but the fact of the matter is something happened. Now, fast forwarding here, we'll see with Sirianni. Like you said, he's a high energy, authentic guy. But if he's rah rah, how does that present to the because he's not an offense coordinator now. He's a head coach, right? So now we're going to learn. I, that's a fair point. I'm not going to argue against what you said, mm -hmm. but but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he's authentic and he. The thing that I love that he talks about. He said almost at every time he's talked is teaching mm -hmm. and player development, how important it is. This has been the loss. It was a lost cause on Peterson's staff. As good of a job as they did for about three years, it started aggressive 19 and 20, where, I mean, you, you could go through so many players and so many positions. You go, these guys have not progressed. Right. And that's got to happen here. Uh, absolutely. Talent development has got to be kind of the number one thing with this new staff that you hope to see the biggest change with. All right, let's get in um, to some more free agents that could be on the way. First, we'll stop and uh, let you know about our friends at PHLSportsNation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all of our Philadelphia professional sports teams. They do a great job for the fan, by the fan. That's their motto. Make sure you're checking out all of their great coverage content podcasts at PHLSportsNation.com. Find them on Twitter at PHLSportsNation.com. And let's pause another moment to talk about our other great friends from Sky Motor Cars. All right, Adam, let's talk about, uh, oh, by the way, if you do stop into Sky Motor Cars, make sure you tell them that Adam or Jeff sent you. All right. All right. Uh, let's get into some other, because we've been talking about this for quite a while. The Eagles still need a backup quarterback. And we know Brissett's gone. We know Tyrod Taylor's gone. There have been other names off. 
you're starting to get into that territory, right? Like, <laughs> you know, a lot less. everybody cringes when you say Blaine Gabbert or some other name that just makes you cringe when it's like, well, that's th- what else are you expecting here? You know? Yeah. So here are the names. Colt McCoy, who's a West Coast offensive quarterback, doesn't have a very good arm, decently athletic, but he's not on their list as far as I, I know. Uh, Blaine Gabbert, uh, that's Bruce Arians guy who had him in Arizona. He loves him. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't go back to the Bucks. Former, high, obviously a first round pick. He looks pretty in the lineup, and then once he gets out there, he's just he just can't sustain anything. Brian Hoyer, they're not interested in. I'm told, um, though Sirianni is with them for a year in, in 18. I was told that he's not on the list this time around. Mm-hmm. AJ McCarron, former Alabama quarterback. Josh McCown. I don't know if Josh wants to play anymore. He was cut by the Texans. He it's going to go into you know he was coaching in high school and Sean Mannion, who was a backup for the Rams and. Sean Mannion. <laughs> yeah, and, and the Vikings now. But it's it's Joe Flacco is that guy. We've been saying it now. As, I, as I'm told, it was Monday morning. Eagles are in Flacco, the Niners who we visited, and the Jets. So I expect when the next 24 to 48 hours, he's going to have a new team. Eagles definitely have interest in him. That's it's a fact, not a secret. Uh, they're definitely, this is the second year they've had interest in him. I think it's a little bit stronger this time. Why? Joe's not coming off surgery this time. His tape was good. The limited tape that he put together, filling in for Darnold, was good. And remember last year, Peterson, I don't know why he did this. He told Nate Sudfeld he'd be the number two. And that that, that also played into it. Well, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and we'll, we'll see what happens. If they don't get Flacco, those are the names that we just ran through. That Those are the guys who were on the street who, who were with teams last season. Pretty steep drop-off. I mean, I know, I know for some people, Joe Flacco is – they, they, eh, Joe Flacco, but I mean, I thought a, a he's won a Super Bowl. B he's played pretty well in this league, many many playoff games. C I actually thought I, I guess I wound up seeing the game last last year. He had to fill in for um, Sam Darnold. What for two games? I thought he played fairly well in those games. So I think he'd be a a really good backup. I do question why someone like Colt McCoy would not be on the list because it, I mean, Sirianni is going to run a pretty pure West coast offense and McCoy has experience basically only in West coast offenses. So I wonder what it is that would make you just scratch him right off the list, but either way, um, he's okay. I mean, well, well I want well, to get everybody's to, just okay at this point. Right. You know? I, I, um, he, he's just uh, Flacco's it's Flacco so much better than Colt McCoy. It's like the totally like a agree. Different time zone. He's better than all those guys. He just, He's a guy the Eagles have liked that, you know, as I understand it for, for years, they've always liked him. It's just, they've had the, mm-hmm. you know, last year was a good opportunity to do it. They didn't want to, and the neck surgery was obviously big. I understand that, but now he's clean up with the neck and everything's ready to go here. So we'll see what happens. Um, do we know, do you have an, any sense of what kind of market, not teams, but like how much it would cost to bring in Joe? Flacco? Well, Brissett. Okay. So what, right now, as, as I know at Monday morning, there are at least three teams involved. The Jets, who obviously had him last season, the Niners, who we visited, and the Eagles. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there are any more, if there are any other teams, but leverage is everything. Um, it depends on obviously what they're offering. Uh, Brissett signed very early. He got he got five million. That's what he's making. There's a little bit of upside if, for playing time. Right. So you would think that would be a similar kind of contract. I don't know why he would take less unless, look, if they're only if teams are only offering two million, then <laughs> that's all you get. So I don't I don't know, but. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that, those are the guys that are out there. Uh, Flacco is by far better than all those guys. So we'll see how that goes down. Yeah, we will. All right. Uh, I wish everybody should have someone love them. Like Bruce Arians loves Blaine Gabbert. I tell loves you Loves him. Loves Blaine loves Gabbert, him. huh? He's the one. I love that line. Everyone <laughs> should have someone that loves him that much. So I love that when you see them. I love that. It's yeah. Hilarious. Well, it's in this case, it's pretty true. Although, I mean, Blaine did have that pretty good year um, that earned him that contract. <laughs> So I guess being a good backup quarterback is really perfect for him anyway. Um, you said you had some some insight into the offensive scheme that you wanted yeah, to go. Yeah, I want to just clear something up. It's not that it's it it's West Coast terminology based. It's the 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 type of routes, as I understand it, that the receivers will run will be more West Coast uh, angles and slants and just it's. A timing, rhythm, get it out of the quarterback's hands. Accuracy, got to be with the quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Accuracy is very important now. Hertz's accuracy numbers were poor last season, but there's a reason for that. 
I, I think he played way better than people think he did. Uh, he got a lot of criticism for his composite numbers, but I, I still believe that he's way better than you think. The Washington game is totally unfair. Look who was out there. Um, backup linemen, young receivers. He had no timing with these guys. I still say that Arizona game is a perfect example of what he could be as quarterback, how he brought them back. That was that was a fun game to watch, man. That I thought they when they were down whatever it was 17, 20 to nothing. I'm like, well, they're done. And he brought them back. That, that yeah, he did. That's that to me is really and on the road. I don't care if their fans are not there. That 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 shows me something. So uh, I, I we'll agree see. with you on that. I, I where where I get really confused is where people say that the Eagles should definitely not draft a quarterback if if they even if they like one at six because they have so many holes on the team. You need playmakers, and you should at least give Jalen Hurts a chance. And I I just don't understand the just give Jalen Hurts a chance if it under the premise that the Eagles would like a quarterback who's there at six like a Justin Fields or Trey Lance or whoever it is because I don't understand like you know we know that the quarterback is the most important position and if the team thinks not me if the team thinks that Justin Fields or Trey Lance is going to be a franchise quarterback and it's not exactly sure on Jalen Hurts why would you not want them to take the guy that they're more? And when I say they, I'm really talking about the coaching staff because I believe in my in my personal opinion, this should be a coaching staff decision because they're the guys who are going to evaluate and coach the position and be responsible for grooming it. When, when so you it say, but wait a minute. When you say it's a coaching staff decision, what do you mean by like you mean? I mean like if Nick Sirianni and his staff, they should they are. We know they're evaluating all the quarterbacks. Yeah. They're going yeah. to pro days. If they fall in love with Justin Fields and they think he'll be there at six, I it's my personal belief. If I'm the owner of the GM, then you have to take that player because this is the, the person that your most experienced coach on offense believes is the best for your team. So it's got to be by your board, though. Yeah, but it's got to be by your board. Your board speaks to you, as Ozzie Newsom said. I love this line. Well, the, how is that not by the board? Going. What I'm saying, I'm saying they right. grade these guys as top five, top ten quarterbacks. Well, if he, look, if, if if okay, I'm gonna take your your point of step further. If Fields' grade is above Chase, you take Fields. Simple game game's over. Right. But if he's not, you take again. If it's very similar, if 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 the grade is if Fields is six point. One. I see what you're, okay, I see what you're saying. I thought you were yeah. mean. Thought you were meaning like, how would he on the board compare to where you had Jalen Hurts on the board when they're not on the board at the same time? I, I, look, I believe in exceptions for quarterbacks. I, I do. I'm I'm a by the board guy, but if you need a quarterback, well, and you right, think right, right. Be, to everything, right. But and also yeah. one thing I do want to add. This is really important. So I learned this from Bill Polian. Bill said it doesn't matter what the position is, and quarterback included. If there's an upgrade there, you take them. So as Jeff's saying, if the quarterback is the best player on the board, Jalen Hurts, it doesn't matter. If, if he's better than Jalen Hurts, you take him and you run with it. But he's got to be – you got to think he's better, by the way. Mm -hmm. you, you got to feel like that in your tape study that here's where Hurts is, and let's say it's Fields. This is where we think Fields could go, where Hurts can't go. That, it's over. Game is over. Right. And, and, and in, in fairness – we haven't gotten into the draft yet. We will, but I have talked to some yeah. people and even Daniel Jeremiah was, you know, I was on his press conference and some of the people I spoke to said, you know what fields and, and Lance really, they have everything it takes and project to in two or three, they all will pretty much tell you that they have the better skill set. They, as far as driving the ball, the accuracy, the athleticism than Jalen hurts. I haven't heard too many people say that. I agree. Justin Fields yeah. does not project to be better than Jalen Hurts. They both do, and they it's both not, think, and they and both I'm think not, it's going to be pretty, pretty. I don't think it's sizable. close. Yeah, well, I don't think I don't think it's close between. If if the draft, and I know people love asking these questions, they're kind of comical, but I, I'll 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 address it because well, you know, I it's like one guy asked on our board. I I don't even know if I think I passed on it because it's just so hypothetical. No one can tell you, but I I asked because I thought it was funny. If if Hertz was in the draft this year, where would he go? Third, second, late th second, early third is what I was told. Mm -hmm. There's just not a lot of love for him around the league. They like mm -hmm. the kid. They just see flaws in Hertz's game, which with better coaching, by the way, right, could be corrected. It could be. All I just 
Look, I'm not the type of person normally, like, if you can present a pretty good argument to me and it's against what I'm saying, I'll be like, okay, I respect your, your opinion. I disagree. I respect and understand. More so I understand because I, 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 I think you and I don't think like fans on uh, because we're not. And then also we're so far removed from it. I do think that fans need to feel somebody they need to get behind immediately. That's In other true. words, Carson's gone. Jalen was a, the, the good soldier. He did this great thing for Alex. Like, I am now a Jalen Hurt. And it's like they can't even wait six weeks to see if there's a better alternative. They just want to go full steam ahead on Jalen Hurts. God bless. I get it. I totally understand what that's like. I'm removed many years from it, but I, you know, I, I kind of remember what that feeling is like. But I, I, I would have to say, please try hard to be objective about it and see the other side. It doesn't, the whole philosophy of just give him a year and we have other holes to fill, that doesn't make sense to me. Like you, every team has holes to fill. Even the team that just won the, the Super Bowl, the Bucks, they got holes to fill. It's when you have eliteness at certain positions, especially quarterback, that cover up or not your great. holes. Right. right. So, afraid. so I don't, I, I, I just don't accept the argument. We just need to get playmakers. And then if next year we're not good, we'll get a quarterback. Cause we'll be bad. No, no, no. If you've got a guy now and you have the opportunity, you get that guy. I, I, That's how and, I feel about it. And let me add something to that before we get out of here. So I know some people, and it's a fair point and I, it, I, I definitely understand it. You know, you, if, if you take a quarterback at six, you, people are saying, some people are saying, look, you're wasting, you just wasted hurts. Yes and no. There was never any. I don't. I know people. Some people said I'm wrong in this. I mean, I'm not because I asked. I asked actually after the draft. People would know. Mm -hmm. Did not draft Hurts with the thinking that he would ever be their starter. Right. But they thought he was. Certain people with Eagles thought he was special. Okay, we'll we'll see. Yeah. But they didn't know this would happen. All I was saying is, listen, if you, once it's gone now, at least you want to take a look at the guy. But again, to some to move this forward. I do understand, though, if your grade says Fields is better than Hurts, there's no debate. It's over. Fields is the guy. Right. Now, Lance is not special. Barring a Mitch Trubisky-type reach or shock, Lance is going in the second half of the first round. That's kind of where I what I've heard. Right. Now, things could change. Could always change. And he only needs one team, the Tim Tebow rule. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. I said he wouldn't go in the first round. I didn't know that Josh McDaniels was in love with him. I didn't know that. <laughs> I have a feeling after that pro day that someone's going to go up to get Trey Lance. We'll see. Uh, I was good. And I know, um, you know, I was talking to a team, um, you know, the three top people were there and they, they, they loved him. I mean, just cause they wanted to see, cause he only played the one game and this season. It wasn't very good this past right. season. Right. They wanted to see him up close just to get a better idea. And I know it's a pro day and they're all scripted and all that, but you want to see him snap it off. He did. Sure. You want to get in front of him. They did. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's, he's a, a really kid. good kid. Apparently. He's yeah. a great kid. Yeah. Uh, he's also what 230. I mean, he's enormous. He's got he's a lot of gifts. He he's ran just fast. Got a long release. Mm -hmm. he's got he's a little, he just got to be patient. But we know we've talked about this on our show over the th four years, whatever the hell it is, three years, right? The team's get impatient. I remember the Bucks tell me, and I'm playing Blake Bortles. You're one, they played him, <laughs> they started him after. <laughs> Was was I can't remember if Gabbert was there or not. He I I think he might have been this first year, but anyway, the teams say one thing as you know and, and do another. So yeah, you, you know, last year Adam the Broncos did not have a top ten or twelve pick. All right, I think they picked fifteenth. Bear with me here. I'm I, I'm getting sure. to this for a point. Sure. I, I'm of the belief, and I'll ask if you agree. If the Broncos had a top ten pick, do you think that they would have had if they had the opportunity to take Tua? or the opportunity to take Justin Herbert. You think they probably would have taken one of those two? Yes. I mean, they've been looking well, for a quarterback. Elway. For... Now, now, well, hang on. Uh -huh. Hang on. Now, see, L.A. has completely failed at quarterback, as you know, developed, uh, drafting the right guys. He, he did well in a lot of other positions. Uh -huh. He's got every single one of them wrong, except the one thing he was smart about is not resigning Black Brock Osweiler. Yeah, that was smart. Right. Getting rid of him walk, thank goodness. But... I'm of yeah. the belief that he probably would have if he had the opportunity to get Tua or Herbert. I don't know. We'll I would never think, know. but I, I, I don't know. But here's the, here's the, here's, I'll say this. I think if they were picking in the top 10, they should have taken one of those guys because they need a quarterback, right? All right. Well, the year before, they took Drew Locke in the second round. And right. they took them even higher than the Eagles took Jalen Hurts. 
So my point is to say, don't pa- don't think because you drafted a guy in the second round that you owe it to him to give him X amount of time. He's a, fair. not a lot of quarterbacks get drafted in the second round that are really successful in this league. Yeah, there are some, but not your, your, your fertile ground for franchise quarterbacks is almost by and large, usually the top 15, the first round of the draft. Fair enough. So if you have an opportunity, you should get that guy. He was a, and by the way, Hertz was a late second round pick. As you, you and I had said after the draft, there might have actually been, I'd have to look at text. I think I got more fourth round grades from teams than third. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like with Dak Prescott. Like Dak had a little bit of an off off the field issue, right? Um, small, which scared some teams, and it, it went up. Thank goodness, there nothing ever became of it. Um, it just in terms of the, it as an NFL player, just you got everything straight now. And he's he's been great. Yeah, but there's some teams that love Dak, but they were not. They didn't like his offense that he played at Mississippi State. Um, there's parts about his game that they didn't like, and they were wrong. Look, they, that was w- the Wentz draft. He should have gone higher. No, Hurts, I'm not getting that from teams. Still, when I, when I asked, because uh, I thought it was it, I, I was kind of funny because people love going back. Well, where would this be, guy be if, if um, he was in the draft this year, not a rookie le- last year? It, it's obviously all hypothetical. You can't answer it. But I thought because it was Hurts, I'm like, you know, I want to ask this question. I'm just curious. I still got more three third round grades and second just asked i asked like two or three people in the league that i like and who know the right. quarterback position um they saw his tape last season it's just again four games it's not enough but you make a great point i'm not gonna challenge it because it's really a good point you just can't so well he needs he deserves to get a chance yeah no if they don't a, draft yeah. a quarterback in the first round hell yeah right uh, that I yeah I'm with it and by the way I have no problem if they're they go full steam ahead with Jalen Hurts it's to me it's not about the the person it's about the principle right yeah is that I understand you That's do fair. what you can to get the best player yeah, and I just want to see him play I I'm very curious coach's son that Arizona game showed me a lot of toughness mental toughness it's 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 hard man when you don't work with these guys in the off season your your new teammates you're a rookie <laughs> you have no off season June May and June I mean you're missing three to five hundred throws. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, that was so. a very difficult situation. I, yeah. I and I will repeat because I know when I say these things, people like to brand me as a Jalen Hurts hater, which I'm not at all. I thought he did like you a phenomenal job of overcoming so many obstacles just to get on the field and win a game against New Orleans and and be ready and leapfrog yeah. leapfrog um, Sudfeld, who we thought going into the year was going to be the backup quarterback supposed so to be did a tremendous <laughs> job I, it, to it me is. it's just about you don't ignore certain possibilities when it knocks at your door that's all and i, I don't believe in the uh, idea that you have to give somebody you have to like their feelings or you take into account or how it looks no, no just, it doesn't you matter get the best players yeah did you see do you matter. think aaron i know aaron Rodgers clearly was not happy he indicated as much when i want he, he went up being the mvp when they drafted jordan love he got motivated by it i maybe i'm not him but yeah you know, you just, you can't worry about that stuff. I don't want to start the one stuff. I'm not going there. <laughs> no, but, no. but, but you just, you, you, you made another great point. If they do draft a quarterback at six or they trade for Watson, although right now with this legal stuff, who the hell knows where that's going. But if they do add a, a quarterback at six, it's because they think it's an upgrade over the guy that they have. Exactly. Exactly. So when people say like, oh, but you're doing the same thing to Carson now, you're doing the same thing to Jalen. No, because Jalen wasn't a top five pick. He's not dis- warranted anything other than you were a second oh, no, no, round if he pick. Had been, I would say this, if had he been a first round pick, different, different story. story. Totally. You, different you know, story. You, you're going to have a hard sell. You're going to give up on a first round pick. Right. No, totally yeah. different story. That would look yes. moronic. <laughs> There's, they ain't doing that. Yeah. That's right. Doing that. A second round pick who fairly as we've reported many times i don't know that and most other teams viewed him as a second round pick but whatever Uh, i'll leave it at that we'll see what happens we'll be back again thursday morning 6 a.m uh we'll have our live stream our ask itb live stream tuesday night eight o'clock so catch us uh on that as well that'll do it for inside the birds the leading podcast in eagles intel big thanks to our Producer Hunter Brody, check him out on uh, YouTube. His channel is called Sports Talk with Broads. His Twitter account is at Broads81. And as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the bird.